Energy. It heats our homes, powers our industry, gets us wherever we need to go. But Ireland has a massive energy problem. For decades, up to 98% of our energy came from fossil fuel. But now, Ireland has pledged to eliminate almost all fossil fuels over the next 30 years. Which means the future of energy production is set for huge changes. In this episode, we're going to look at one of the most crucial questions that affect us all. How is Ireland going to power itself sustainably throughout this century? Today, energy is the lifeblood of our economy, an integral part of our everyday lives. But we face a daunting challenge. How do we generate enough power to meet our growing needs, while at the same time breaking our reliance on oil, gas, coal, and peat? The task seems insurmountable. 700,000 Irish homes rely on oil for their heat. Over 95% of us drive petrol or diesel cars, and our reliance on coal and peat for power makes our electricity very carbon intensive. We need massive change. But we faced a challenge on this scale before. In the 1920s, when Ireland barely produced electricity at all, the Irish government built the largest power station in our history, Ardna Crusha. Now, if we go back to when this was built, what percentage of the total electricity in Ireland was this producing? Between 96 and 100% of Ireland's power in 1929. Now, with the growth in the economy that's happened since, the demand for electricity, it produces around 2% of our total electricity requirement now. That's an incredible change, isn't it, in terms of the amount of electricity demand from going back from the 1930s. Since Ardna Crusha came online, our electricity use has gone up 100-fold and will rise further as we electrify our heat and transport. But is it even possible to power our future sustainably? In the old control room, I'm meeting Phil Hemingway of the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland to find out. So back when Ardner Crusher was built in the 1920s, it produced enough electricity to cater for the entire needs of the country. What's happened since then is um, the amount of power demand uh, has increased very substantially as our economy has grown and we've looked to fossil fuels in order to provide that power. So we've looked to oil and gas and coal primarily to, to feed our desire for more power. And we're at the stage now where we are emitting far too much as a society and as a, an economy, and we need to look to renewables and energy efficiency in order to get off fossil fuels. Right, now where do you see us by 2030? How far will we have advanced? Our climate, ac climate action plan targets very significant transformational change in the whole of the electricity sector. So our target for renewable electricity by 2030 is 70%. That's really going to stress the system. It's a very, very big ambition. So if we look back at the last 10 or 15 years, we've had an evolution of our energy system. The next 10 years must be a revolution of our energy system if we're to meet our international targets. Renewable energy is the key to ending our reliance on fossil fuel. How our electricity is generated and travels around the country must change to have any hope of sustainably powering ourselves throughout the 21st century. In the future, our electricity supply will come from hundreds of thousands of small, diverse producers of energy, all working in tandem. And this is where it's all controlled. He 
Here at AirGrid's National Control Centre, we can see, in real time, how electricity gets to our homes. But what's this graphic here that I'm looking at? Believe it or not, this is actually a map of the power system of Ireland. It's roughly geographical, so over here we have Dublin. Down here to the right-hand side we have Waterford, Wexford, going across to Cork and Kerry on the uh, bottom left-hand side, and then all the way up the west coast to Donegal on the north. So each of the little uh, dots on the map is a, a kind of a substation or a node or a point that the power system is uh, feeding other stations and other down into homes and factories, businesses, schools, etc. Darren, I notice the figures over here are changing all the time. Can you describe some of these here? Yeah, so this is a, a really good overview of what's happening on the system. You see we have quite a lot of uh, wind on the system today, so just over 2,700 megawatts. So about 60% of the island's uh, demand is being met by wind generation at this that's point. That's very high, so that's, 60%. That's, that's very good. Obviously, there are days where there's very little wind, but today is one of the days where there's a, a lot of wind generation on the island. So and how high can you go with that? So at the moment, we can operate the power system with up to 65% of renewables or non-synchronous generation. So we are pushing that over the course of the next couple of years to move up to 75%. And um, obviously, with the new government targets for 70% of energy from renewable sources by 2030, we'll be pushing that boundary further and further. It's incredible to see nearly 60% of our electricity coming from wind on the day of my visit. There are other renewables, but in Ireland, wind is by far our largest and cheapest resource. As a result, government policy is set to add more and more of it to our grid. For some people, this is controversial. Since wind farms arrived here 30 years ago, some communities have voiced fears. About the noise, the flicker from the turbines, the distance from homes, and the visual impact to the landscape. The government has recently prepared guidelines to address these concerns, which are subject to public consultation until February 2020. Across Galway, objections to wind farms have been numerous, and some have been very fraught. But I've always been interested in how local communities themselves can actually benefit from wind farms. So I'm visiting the largest one in Ireland, owned by SSE and Quilcha, the Galway Wind Park. Oh, look at this, people walking. That's great to see. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. Hi. They're locals, are they? They are indeed, yeah. Yeah, and do you get many people up here like this, John? You would indeed, yeah. We have about basically 1,000 or so visitors per month. OK. These mountains here that we're in, a lot of it's forestry here. We presume that's Quilcher land, is it? Most of the turbines are on Quilcher property, um, but there are turbines also on some private properties. Now, the wingspan of these turbines and the height of the tower up to the nacelle, what sort of height are you talking about? So the turbines themselves are 140 metres to the tip, and the rotor then is 100 metres in diameter. Here we are now. We'll stop here for a moment. Wow. John, what a place. Quite a view. So this right. is Gola Bay off to our left here and uh, the Cliffs of Moher just across here. Cliffs of Moher over here? Yeah, right, and okay. the Iron Islands just out across here then. OK, so the Atlantic's so. out this way to the west with it the is indeed, yeah. and. All these wind turbines, are these all part of the wind farm? All part of the, the wind park. So uh, basically we have 58 turbines here in total. So about 174 megawatts of export capacity. And it equates to about 142,000 homes been powered. So that gives you kind of a scale. So that's more than all the houses in County Galway. So you're a net, net basically export of energy from yeah, if the we county? Yeah, if we look at all the wind farms across Galway now, we're actually, Galway County is a net exporter of wind. But power generation is only part of why I've come. How did the wind park benefit the local community? People felt that if you built all these tracks, you know, we should be able to use them. 
So they asked us to loop the ends of the turbine trails with narrow trails I can see here beside us. Right, so in other words, you can drive to get up to maintain the turbines, but you can walk through the whole estate. Correct, and, and the public don't have access to drive in, in the area, but they can walk in the area and cycle in the area. So it's a very safe environment for children, for cyclists, for pedestrians and so on. We also then have a major projects fund. And with that fund, what we decided to do was to actually provide upgrades to houses which are adjacent to the Energy retrofits. Energy retrofits, yeah. Right. So we felt that was a very sustainable way to give them a, a direct benefit. These funds now will go on for the next 25 years? For the next 25 years, correct. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's good. And, and it's, it's important to, to recognise and support the communities who are essentially the neighbours of the projects. This wind farm already contributes over €400,000 to the local community annually. But under a new government policy, all new turbines like this will each provide approximately €250,000 to a neighbouring community over a 15-year period. I'd like to see much more in this direction and support for community ownership. In the next 10 years, we need to treble our renewable electricity production, and wind is essential in making this happen. So you have about 58 turbines around you right now, and this is the level of noise that you'll hear from it. And we're within 200 metres of that turbine, Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. For everybody, the perception of noise is different, so for anyone who's trying to decide for themselves, is this an issue for them, we would simply advise them, go and visit a wind farm, see what it's like. By 2030, we're going to need really a million electric cars on the road, number one. Yeah. And we're going to need maybe our trains running in electric, and we're going to need an awful yeah. lot more electrification in our transport, yeah. but also in our heating with heat pumps. Yeah. How are we going to manage that? So the scale of the resource of wind that we have in Ireland far exceeds the amount of electricity we would need to power something like an electric vehicle fleet of a, of a million cars. And that's because people sometimes don't fully appreciate just how much electricity these machines are capable of producing. So there's over 2,000 turbines in Ireland today. To double the amount of onshore wind in Ireland, we'll need less than 1,000 turbines to do that because the efficiency of wind turbines has grown so, so much since the first one 25 years ago. So over the next 10 years, we need to get around double the amount of electricity from onshore wind compared to what you have to do today but then use those skill sets as well in the offshore sector and build that up like we've done in the onshore space. So the, the amount of power we're getting from wind farms is far more than we would need to try and offset the power we'll consume from those electric vehicles and heat pumps. We absolutely have the resource. David's outlook for the future is heartening, especially knowing we have some of the best wind in Europe. But depending more on wind energy also has its challenges. So can our grid handle this monumental shift to intermittent power?